We're going to go ahead and get started. So welcome to today's class. My name is Caitlin, and I am so glad that you could join us today for our Adobe InDesign Design a Book class. And I am assisted today by my chat facilitator, Hannah. Please say hi, Hannah. Hello. So before we get started, we have some ground rules before uh, we get going. Your mics have been muted on purpose. If you have any program related questions you would like to ask, please do so in chat, which can be accessed at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Your text will only be seen by panelists, not all attendees. Any inappropriate behavior will result in your removal from this virtual program. We will try to answer the questions as we go along, but there will be time for Q&A after the lesson is over. A recording of this class will be sent out at a later date. So today we are covering the basics of creating a book in InDesign. So what this will entail is a few things, but I do want to stress that all skill levels are welcome in this class and that today we are covering the basics of formatting. So let's jump right in. First and foremost, what is Adobe InDesign? It is an industry standard publishing application for print and digital media. InDesign allows ease of access for page layout and web design. It is useful for creating flyers, books, magazines, newspapers, interactive PDFs, and more. So where do we start? Well, first and foremost, it's very helpful if you already have your content created. So if you have your book um, already written and in a file somewhere. Uh, in design, you can write your content in this software. However, it is by and large a formatting software. So it'd be far more beneficial for you to already have your content written in something like Google Docs, Microsoft Word, or any other kind of word formatting software that you have access to. What we are going to jump into next would then be the formatting. So when we talk about formatting, you need to understand how you're going to print your material. So that leads us to self-publishing versus publishing houses, because your formatting will take a different route depending on how you're going to publish your material. So I say this all the time with InDesign, you need to think about your output. You need to think what the intention is for, um, for your material. So in book publishing, you can publish online with digital publication, or you can print your material. So if you're going to work with a publishing house, um, you normally don't have to worry about formatting. They will bring you different copies, sizes, and work all of that out internally. Now, if you're going to go the route of self-publishing, then you need to work with your printer or you need to work with whatever self-publishing uh, or organization alternative um, of your choice. Each one is going to have different uh, capabilities and requirements. So for instance, with a printing house, if you're going with a print material book, you need to think about what their capabilities are, what is their max page count, um, what is your budget for printing, and then you want to think about how are you going to market your book? What is the standard size for whatever kind of content you're putting out there? Is it fiction? Fiction has a whole heap of different sizes that you can choose from. A small uh, paperback, which is four and, four and a quarter inch by like 6.87 inches, or a medium size book, which is five by eight sometimes a little bigger than five by eight um, until you finally get into those larger uh, hardback copies that are five and a half by eight and a half or six inch by nine inch, um, which has overlap with nonfiction. Nonfiction tends to generally have only those larger size publishing sizes, which is like five and a half inch by eight and a half inch, six, six inch by nine inch, seven inches by 10 inches, and then with children's um, publishing, you can have pretty much any size out there from extremely tiny to extremely large. 
it's important to understand that when you get into formatting, because if you're going the route of self-publishing, you were doing all of that yourself in most cases, or you are hiring someone to do it for you, in which case you have to give them very specific guidelines so that they create um, what is going to be marketable for that, for that industry, um, as well as what is going to be um, most beneficial for you and what you want in material. Because if you don't give them any direction, they'll just create whatever is standard for them. And you'll be like, that's not what I wanted. Or you have that, again, bigger question of how do I even start? What am I doing? And if you format it just like a normal Word document, it's not going to be what you want at all. A printer won't print it. Um, so that gets into what we are going to cover today. So today we are going to cover setting up your document um, from the perspective of self-publishing, of creating just a normal fiction book. So we're going to cover uh, the basics of setting up your margins, uh, what facing pages means, how to number your pages, etc. Next, I mentioned basics of imposition. So this is something I'm going to cover real quick here, um, which is why, what is this term, um, how it works, when to use it. This is very important if you are self-publishing and depending on the printing house you are working with. Um, imposition is a printing concept referring to a pre-pressed page arrangement process. It arranges the product pages to the printer's larger sheets to increase printing speed, simplify binding, and reduce paper waste. All of which sounds like great things because that will be reflected in the cost. So this image over here on the right is imposition. So ideally your printer will handle this and you don't have to worry about it, but in some cases they will request that your document be formatted with imposition in mind. Um, so you have to think in terms of how they cut their paper. So this image with the front side and back side is one single document. Well, one single piece of paper, I should say. So you have the front side of the paper and you have the back side. So in InDesign, you would format your pages to be reflected as one and then the back side of it is 16 and vice versa with each side. So you have two and the flip side of that is 15 because they would print this, cut it down to side and then fold it. Um, so it's a very complicated process. I highly recommend that if you are having to do your own imposition that you look up a great um, LinkedIn learning tutorial on imposition or you simply Google a guide to imposition uh, formatting. But luckily, um, most most publishing houses, um, printing houses will will do this for you nowadays. Um, whenever I was learning graphic design and uh, digital publishing, this was huge headache to kind of wrap your head around um, how to submit documents properly for printing. And um, if you don't do it right, your pages will not line up correctly. So it's it's very important if you're working with a public printing house and um, having to do all of this yourself. So now that we've covered in position, because that is a huge portion of formatting is simply getting things in the right order for printing, we have our master pages. Master pages are amazing. They are a great tool that are essentially um, pages that exist at the top of the panel, which I will show you all of that organization when we switch into InDesign, but they are pages that you can preset with content to act as templates um, that are used throughout the document for pages that have repeated content. So this is where we can have our page numbering, consistent text placement. If you're going to have multiple chapters, you can have consistent um, chapter formatting, chapter first page of the chapter formatting, all of these things you would set up in your master pages. And next we have 
styles. So InDesign has this really, really great feature called styles that al allows you to save and re-implement formatting styles with one click. And they let you do this for paragraph styles, character styles, and object si styles. So I will, I will definitely get into that more, but it will allow you to um, do things like a drop cap more easily, um, apply specific font characteristics or text wrap to things that you imp input into your document. And lastly, we're going to cover book files. We may or may not get to this. It's an advanced feature of InDesign. Um, but the basic overview, we will I will try and cover and try and also share with you how they are useful to your um, book formatting and how they are not. Really, the, the long and short of it is they're incredibly useful if you're doing book for, formatting as a career. It can often be um, a little overwhelming if this is your first time formatting your own book or if it's not something you do on the regular. So let's go ahead and jump into InDesign. So I'm going to switch uh, my share on the screen. And while I'm doing that, uh, please feel free to uh, type any questions you have in the chat. Um, Hannah is great and will share those with me. So, okay. Ideally, you should be seeing the InSign start screen. If you are not, just let me know. Okay. So when you open um, InDesign, you should see this start screen. You should see a toolbar, a kind of mini bar at the very top. And over here on the left, you should see new file and open. So what we are going to do is just select new file. You can also access this by going up to file at the top of the screen. And we are going to create something new. Now you'll notice that there are saved templates, print, web, and mobile preset templates you can use. Those are great if you're working off of something um, similar. So if you're uh, this is your second or third book, and you happen to have the same file, you could actually save that as a template and work off of something like that. Now, in this case, I'm going to show you how to start from scratch. So we are going to name this document right up here, book example. And even more importantly, we're going to switch our units of measurement here two inches and now we get into the sizes so it's going to be preset to letter sizes however that is not the size we want our book so in most cases a standard fiction book uh, hardcover is gonna, going to be a, a fairly large size i'm going to go with five and a half by eight and a half we're just going to go ahead and say that we have a pretty pretty big book that's going to be published. So I'm going to adjust that to 5.5 and go down to the height and adjust that to 8.5. Now, when we get into the number of pages and facing pages, this is very significant. Now, facing pages, this is a feature um, where you see each pages as two pages shown side by side. This is called a spread in InDesign, and it is used for documents that will be print or bound. Now, if we were creating our book for digital publication, I would leave this unchecked. And that is because digital publication has um, very different requirements than print. It has similar, similar uh, margin specifications, but it actually depends on the if you're going the route of an EPUB or using Amazon formatting, um, but either way you want to use something called liquid layout in that case. Um, that is more advanced and today we are remaining focused on those basic techniques. So we're going to stick with print and we're going to make sure that facing pages is selected. Now for pages, ideally you have, um, 
an idea of how long your, your book is going to be. In my opinion, it is always best to start with too much than not enough. Now you have to understand that your file size can become huge the more pages you add and the more graphics you have in your document. Um, that being said, it is still far better to work with more rather than not enough. Now, another, another route you can go with pages and your document is um, using, again, that feature book files to manage everything. If you were to go that route, um, you wouldn't have one large docu document file. You would have several saved under the same book file. So you would have your introduction as one file, your, each chapter saved as one file, et cetera, et cetera. And it does make organization a lot simpler. It does make um, accessing things a lot quicker because again, when you have say 300 pages, it's going to make loading this file um, more difficult. It's going to, not difficult, it's going to take it longer to load. So it's not so much about, is it hard, is it easy? It's about um, just better accessibility, really. Okay, um, start at one, that is ideal. Um, if you select primary text frame, that is just already inserting a text frame. Oh, I don't think we need to worry about that. I'd rather put in our own. Um, scrolling down, you see columns, you see column gutter. Next, you see margins. I do know I'm spending a, quite a bit setting this document up, but setting up your document and going through each element um, correctly the first time is a lot easier than having to go back later and fix, fix these, but I'll show you how to do that as well. So with your margins, um, you really, really, really want to make sure that you are communicating with your printer because each printer will have different margin guidelines. So you see this chain link over here on the right hand side. Uh, when it's together, it means every margin will be the same. When it's broken, uh, then you can adjust one without affecting the other. Now with print publication, you have to create space for binding. So for the interior, the inside and outside, this is where things are better to have this broken rather than all the same. You need to account for space for the binding. So on the inside, we are going to go ahead and increase that. That's too much. We're going to increase that to 0.5 inch. And then we can have a little bit less on the outside. It's still probably good to have more rather than less. And you can do the same for the bottom and the top as well, depending on if where your page numbers are going to be. If you're going to have them along the top or the bottom, I will say the bottom corners is most common. However, you may have a heading along the top. It just depends on what style you want your book to be in. But we're going to go ahead and give us a little bit more of a uh, margin along the top and bottom because your margin is huge. It can make the text too tight and cause words to be cut off due to the binding or printing constraints. And if it's too loose, it can make reading really awkward. Now again, top and bottom, you need space for those reading headers and feet and page number locations. So that's just reiterating everything I just said. Now, what are these options down below? Bleed and slug. So bleed is if you're going to have something um, printed all the way to the edge of your paper. So this is truly a printing term that ensures that no unprinted white edges occur on a printed object. So what it does, if you're going to have um, a graphic on your chapter page and you want it to be printed all the way to the top edges, then what it is telling the printer is to um, actually print the page on a 
um, larger sheet of paper because a bleed creates an external boundary, boundary uh, to allow all graphics and design elements to extend beyond the document edge so that when it extends, they actually cut it down to your actual page size. So it doesn't affect your printed um, page size at all, but what it does do, it allows you to have a nice clean edge whenever you have a graphic um, that you want extended all the way to the printed and published edge. And slug, slug is something that you really will not use too often, um, except for perhaps if you're going to do something more um, technically expensive with your cover um, of your book. So a slug is a printing term that contains the registration mark and other printing instructions for your printer. It's traditionally text and it exists outside the regular print margins and bleed. So what this does is actually creates a marquee area um, for you to say that you have something like spot colors or uh, that you want something that is um, going to be on your cover to have a matte or satin finish or that you want something to be embossed or debossed. Um, everything that makes um, a cover jacket fancy like foiling or anything like that, um, that would be instructions that you send to your printer by way of the slug. Now, your printer, again, may, may request that you send them instructions another way, but most of the time, they're going to look for those types of things there in a message on your file in the slug. Um, but we're not going to worry about that. We're not doing anything too fancy today. We're just going to go over basic formatting. So this is how to set up your document. If you're ever not sure um, that you did it correctly, you can preview it behind this window. You can drag this over to the side and see what that looks like. So as you can see, we've got our inside and outside um, margin set and it looks pretty good. Now, I would not use this margin area that I specified here as a true guide. I, again, you should always 100% check with your printer um, to see what their recommended margins are for the size of your book, okay? And that is something they will definitely provide. And as far as bleed goes, it does not hurt at all to go ahead and set your document up. However, just know um, that if you don't have anything being printed to the edge, um, you don't need one and your printer um, doesn't need to know that they have to print this on a larger sheet of paper to accommodate that either. Okay, so you can leave it for now, um, but it would be better to go back and change that if you find, find that you have no graphics. So now that we, we like what we're seeing, we're gonna cr click create, and now we see our workspace. So the InDesign workspace is um, truly, it should be familiar to you if you've worked in any of the other Adobe softwares. Um, it auto presets to essentials. Now, I am someone like many other people who grew up working in Microsoft Word. And so I am going to switch my workspace. And this right here is called the Workspace Switcher to Essentials Classic. Um, because I also first started working in Adobe InDesign back in the CS4 iteration. So I am, I do prefer to see all of my uh, text and formatting options up here along this top ribbon. And this will switch according to what tool you have selected. And then over here on the right are your panels. And this can be adjusted and uh, customized, customized as you like. Um, if you go back to the switcher, you can see that there's all of these other options depending on the type of project you have going. There is a book option, and I'm going to go ahead and open this for you so you can see what that looks like. You have your panel options here. You have pages, pages blown up here, your layers and links. 
Um, personally, I find it overwhelming, um, especially if you're not used to it. I, I think that this is very overwhelming, especially if you don't know what everything is and what, what it does. So I honestly prefer to work in um, Essentials Classic. Now, digital publishing, this does pre-open um, some more features that are used in digital publishing. But again, it is very overwhelming if you're new to InDesign, if you're new to these kinds of projects. I would stick to Essentials Classic for the time being. You can do everything the same, but just looks different and in my opinion is a little bit friendlier and minimalist um, so you can close and open everything that you want uh, or drag and open it uh, anywhere else in your workspace and of course over here on the left are all our different tool options um, the ones we will probably use most often today are these black arrow selection this is your direct selection tool and then we have our T, which is our type tool, and then we will probably use our rectangle frame tool the most. Um, so that kind of shows you how to set it up. That gives you a basic overview. Now, if you find, like I do, that you are working in a project and you need to open a new panel to find some sort of formatting option you don't see, going up here to window, you can scroll down and this is where you open all of your different panel options. So if you find that you are missing something and you're not sure where it is, just scroll through and see if something is missing. What I do like about the Essentials Classic is it does tend to cover the most um, basic, most often used features. Um, I will say it's not a bad idea to go ahead and add properties. Properties is really nice because it will actually um, allow you to format, uh, adjust all of the formatting for your document. So if we needed to adjust the margins for whatever reason, um, anything from that initial start menu, it's right here and we can change it without having to go up to file and document setup. So if you weren't sure how to change everything or make micro adjustment, um, this is how you could do it by either opening properties uh, or going to document setup. You could also go to, there's a million different ways. You can go to uh, layout and pages and margins and columns. Um, num number of different ways to accomplish what you need to. I also want to point out that over here in edit and then preferences, you can adjust everything in your document um, by going up to general. If you're not sure where to begin, it has everything that was underneath general in that menu and some other options, but if, for instance, um, your document was set in a measurement, you were like, what is picas and what is points? Or I don't want to work in millimeters. This is how you can adjust that. You can preset and make sure that everything is in inches or whatever um, unit of measurement you prefer. But I'm going to leave it as inches because I'm most comfortable with that. And so now we have our document. And if you don't want um, this to live over there, you can drag it, drag it over there. You can drag it, add it back into your panels. Are there any questions about page setup at all? So far, no, but I will happily interrupt you if there are any questions. Cool, appreciate it. Okay. So now that we have set up our workspace, I've given you an overview of what to expect. Um, we are going to go ahead and open this top right panel for pages. And we are going to jump into those um, master pages. So 
this is interesting. This could be a new change, but they have what is called a parent. Um, this is typically where you would see uh, master page A. And because I am slightly confused by that, I think I might rename it <laughs> if it lets me. Yeah, OK. So um, this, this is a brand new change with the Adobe CC 2022. Um, a parent is the same thing as master pages. Um, I don't know why that change was made, um, but it's a good thing to know. It's the same thing, and uh, we're still going to use it for the purposes of this class. So master pages, really and truly love them. Um, they make everything so much easier. Whenever I was first learning InDesign, I couldn't wrap my head around how they worked. And so I made life a lot harder for myself and did everything manually, which is extremely time concerning, uh, time consuming, consuming, excuse me. So master pages are great. They allow you to simply, if you see how this uh, blue side of that page is highlighted. You can literally drag and apply it to any other page um, and it'll apply that formatting from the get go. Really, really nice feature. So what we want to do on these master pages is actually apply things that will affect every single page. Now, if you find that you do not need both pages and yes, your master pages when you click this plus sign right here to create a new page. You need to make sure that your master page or a parent selection is selected. When you hit plus, it'll create a new one. Um, do, 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 all right there. Um, it'll create both sides. But if you do not need both sides, what you can do is actually drag and drag it to that trash can right there. So this is useful for those uh, first chapter pages uh, that you want to be unique or different. And it's good to know um, how to apply those. Now on our A parent page, what we're going to go ahead and do is if you double click it, it'll take you to that page. Same for any other page in your document. Double click it, you'll go to that page. It may be confusing because the only way to tell the difference is by your scroll bar here. In your master page, you can't scroll to another master page. It's only those two pages in the spread that you will see at that time versus going to a page in your document. Close that panel, that scroll bar is far larger now. You have a lot more room to scroll. So if you ever find yourself confused on if you're on one or the other, um, that's an easy way to figure out where you are. Okay, so something we want to add here are our text, pa our text uh, boxes, our frames for, for placing words. So with the T-tool selected, I'm actually just going to drag and create one to match our margins, which is really nice. And I'm going to actually switch to my black arrow so that I can click this lower right-hand corner box right here, because what I would like to do is actually make sure that my pages are linked. So this will make your life so much easier is linking your text panels so that they will auto flow. And when your uh, text boxes are auto flowed, you will see in that lower right hand box that um, you have an arrow in it now. Before, there was no arrow. But because you clicked and you created a new one on the adjacent page, um, it is now auto flowing. So Again, truly, truly convenient, makes life so much easier that you've applied this in your master page because now when you go and apply it to uh, place your content in your document, you should only have to do it the one time and then make 
formatting adjustments throughout. It's going to, again, make your life a lot easier because you will not have to go through and manually um, place uh, each text box to be linked. If you find that you are still having to do that, um, so again, just to show you, we have a text box here. Now to actually um, make that content accessible on your pages, what you do is you hold control shift and you click and you'll see that now that text box is there because any content on your master page is um, locked. It is locked on your regular pages so that you do not accidentally um, mess with the formatting so that you can then do either control D or go to file and place to load in your Word document. So what I'm going to do is actually just find a random Word document that I have um, somewhere. Yeah, I'll do this one. You can file and place your content. And it's not a huge file that I have here. But if you scroll down, because we linked it, too fast. You can see it auto filled to the next page. So that is what um, creating your text files and making sure they are linked will do um, when you create those text boxes on your master page and make sure they're applied to the entire document. Are there any questions about that? So far, no questions, but I will keep an eye on chat. I appreciate it. And if you think of something later, guys, uh, don't be afraid. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, a lot of InDesign really is a rinse and repeat approach. Um, you will find most of the time you're placing content into your document after you set everything up. The hardest part is just setting things up and making uh, formatting decisions. So I'm going to hit control Z and you'll see that the text that I loaded is still in, in this file. Technically it'll go to your cursor. So if I wanted to, I could simply click off and it would load everything into a text file here. So if you find for whatever reason you accidentally do that, rather than, um, place into your pre-created text boxes. It'll probably create a frame that has overset text. So if for some reason, um, your formatting isn't linked. And this is what I said earlier about having to do things manually. So you could, in fact, line that up on top, line it up with your um, margins on your page, and don't like that, control Z. It popped up with that white arrow, which if it does that, um, just make sure that your direct selection tool is selected. Anytime your margins look all small like that, it's a sign that something's going on. Just make sure, okay. So a few other updated features Looks like my selection tool is now white. Okay. There is a question if you have a moment. Absolutely. Um, can you show how you linked the pages again? Absolutely. So I actually technically just linked those two boxes right there. I'm going to control Z and you'll see that again, it loads to my cursor. I'm going to control Z again and that overset anytime you have overset text it pops up with that red plus mark in your in your um, text box but we're not going to focus on that either so i'm going to go back up here we are on my master page so how i linked everything let's see if it okay awesome i undoed enough to go back to when i only have one so how I linked those, 
you can do it a few ways. You can create two separate ones. This isn't how I, I would normally go about doing it because um, what you have is two separate text frames right here. They're not linked. There's no arrow in that lower right hand corner. So if you click that, you'll see now they're linked. But what you want, want to make sure of is that there's not more than one text box. So no problem. So two different ways. It's the same thing either way to link your text frames. You wanna make sure that you are clicking that lower right hand corner and you are selecting either the text frame you've already created or you want to, um, let's go ahead and delete that, or you want to click and select the page that you want to make sure it's on. And it should auto create a frame on your um, empty page that matches your margins. So that is how you link uh, your text boxes. Did that answer your question? Yes, it sure did. Excellent. Happy to help. And I can repeat anything as much as necessary. And if something I say doesn't make sense, um, just know, again, there's a million and one ways to um, get the same thing done in InDesign. It's not a, this is the only way to do this. Um, no. they made this software very accessible and there's many ways to do the same thing in whatever way that you prefer. So we have our text frames, they are linked and they are applied to the rest of our document. So what we're going to do now that I want to do is add in our page numbering because getting consistent um, numbering is, whew, makes life so much easier. Uh, having to do it all manually is a pain. I can speak from a, from experience here. So what we're going to do is select that text tool again, and we are going to in the corner here just draw a little a little um, frame. And what we're going to do next is I'm actually going to Control C and Control V to create another frame of the same size and I'm going to drag it down here. Now you may have noticed that as I drag things around in InDesign these lines keep popping up. So these green lines are really really useful for aligning things consistently. So you can see that they're aligned um, the same, I believe that's horizontally, vertically, one of the two. Um, but they're aligned. Whenever I move it though you can see oh no longer, but you can see how it is in position to uh, the other frame. Now, if I were to drag it up, uh, you can see, oh, it's centered on this page. You get both vertical and horizontal lines, um, putting it in the center of one or the other. Again, those pink lines indicate page. Green is for uh, selections. So anytime you're trying to match content, so this will align it to the margin or the content of the other page. Uh, and this kind of has it even throughout. Now there is another way to make sure that everything is um, looking the way it should. So you can actually hold down the shift key and select things. So for instance, if this wasn't already aligned, click off and I'm just gonna drag it up. What's important is Wherever you want your content to align to, select that one first, hold down the shift key and click. And over here in my panels, I have this align panel already loaded. And again, you can find that in the Windows um, menu item if it's not in your, your panels already. So you can align your objects consistently without having to drag it, which is oh, makes life easy. So what you want to also double check is your align settings. You want it to be aligned to selection for the most part, but there are times where you may want to align things to your margins or the page or to the entire spread. 
we're going to leave it at selection. Um, but we have our general, general, it's fairly easy to understand edges for center, um, vertical center. Huh. And if need be, you can also align um, consistent spacing between items. It's this bottom option down here. It's not something we're going to use for page numbering, um, but it is a wonderful, wonderful feature. If we have a table of contents, this is what we would would use to make life a lot easier in creating that page and having consistent spacing. Okay, so we have it aligned that way. Um, and then what I like to do is use my keyboard to adjust things uh, from there. So if you want to be really, really specific, I would just use your green arrows and make sure it's kind of aligned to your, your margins. And if you click in the text box, it will automatically um, switch to that type tool. So Again, many ways to get the same thing done. So this is good. We have our selections for, oh man, all the things popping up, um, for our page numbering. So again, it's most commonly in the corner. So that's what we're going to do. And what we are actually going to do now is apply A and we are going to apply B. Now what we want to do on this side of the page is fix our uh, justification. So do, do, do I need this ribbon to go away. Okay, we're going to line that to the right because we want it to be in the corner. Next thing we are going to do is go up to type and we are going to go with that um, let's start with A. Got a little ahead of myself with A. Uh, highlighted, we're going up to type in our menu. We're going down to insert special character. No, we are not. Well, yes, yes, we are. And we're going to markers and we are going to select, you can select section marker. You can do current page number. I would, I would do current page number. And then you just want to go ahead and apply the same thing to B type, insert special character, go to marker and current page number. Then to make sure you did it correctly, go ahead and go down and make sure that this is in fact the page number we're looking for. So there we go. It's moving along now. Awesome. So that's so much easier than trying to do that manually. And if you wanted to add in something consistent like page as a word, you could. It's completely up to you. Um, that's going to be, again, a specific formatting need. So we have our text boxes linked. We have page numbers added. Now, the next thing that we probably want to start looking at is our style guides. Because this will make application of a lot of other features really, really easy. So you can see I already have this in my panel. I have character, which right now InDesign will um, we'll start with none. Now in object styles, it'll have a basic graphics frame and a basic text frame, technically. Um, and you always start with a basic paragraph. What is important to be aware of is that your paragraph style is built from your character style. So character style, it's good to know. Um, go ahead and hit plus. And if you double click that, there we go. It's going to um, 
pop up with this character style options and you can name this um, body text or simply text or if you need something semi bolded or italic italicized it is um, a lot easier to uh, have a consistent naming convention for your character style options so you could even name something as your page number style or you can have something as a um, a blue font in case you have for some reason something different so anytime you have something different in your formatting your text formatting you want to make sure that you um, have that saved in your character and paragraph styles as that name so we're just going to call this um, basic text and it's going to be based off of none because we have no previous style to base it off of. Now font family, Adobe is awesome because you have access to all of the Adobe fonts, as well as if you have something that's not listed here, Google fonts is free, open source, and it's something you can easily add to your computer. Um, now I'm just going to pick something random uh, that we use here quite often I'm going to well if I can find it there we go myriad pro it's wonderful it has a whole heap of options for formatting and it's easy to read um, both digitally and print so I'm going to have that regular and I'm going to have the font size I'm going to stick to um, 12. now leading kerning tracking position those are options specific to spacing of your text um, again that's fairly advanced and in getting into the weeds so we're not going to worry about that too much right now i'm just going to click through and show you all these fun little other options so export tagging something to be aware of if you are going to get into um, digital form digital publishing um, really not something we're going to explore today but if you're doing digital publishing just be aware of export tagging it's a cool feature okay so we have hit okay and we have basic text now over there now in paragraph you can click plus same thing if you double click it another window should pop up okay i was just impatient and this is again where you can start applying things like a name for chapter heading and subheading and numbering you can also assign a name for a drop cap in your chapter um, there's so many options but when it gets into uh, what is usable for your file it's really important to be aware of all of the different options you have here. Now you're going to base it off of no, no paragraph style, basic paragraph. Um, it's not going to be too much of an issue. Now, when you get into basic character format, it's going to base it off of that pre-selected character format that you already have over there. And this is where if it's a chapter heading, you're going to want to make sure that that size is actually pretty big. And you may want to get into some other formatting um, options. You may want to adjust the ju justification to be mm, a line center. So things like that, you want to have different options. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hit OK on that. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new one because before I run out of time, I do want to show you how to create a drop cap in your file, in your text file. Um, so I prefer to create my drop caps in my paragraph style options menu. And what I'm actually going to do is apply it. I'm not going to base it off of the chapter heading. And I'm going to go down to drop caps and nested styles because you can actually indicate how many lines so a drop cap if if you're 
confused by that term. Uh, whenever you open a book, the first letter in the chapter is normally a larger size. In most cases, it's sometimes uh, very artistically done. Sometimes it's as simple as the font just being increased. And you can have it above your paragraph, you can have it um, subset into the paragraph. And that's what this option does. It allows you to increase it by lines. So you can have the letter be as big as five lines and it's only the first character, or you can have it be the first word. I've seen it multiple ways. Um, and the option is really and truly, it's up to you. The character style, you can have it match to your basic text. Um, and this is important to have it aligned to your left edge or to have it indented um, and in spacing. Again, up here, you can indicate how much of a first line indic indent you have. Um, again, sometimes the best way to go about this is to um, import your text and play with it. And this is also an option that you can preview and play with to get um, as as you would want it to be. Um, you can hit OK. And this is, of course, something that you can go back through and adjust as necessary. Um, so again, if we were to have our text placed in here, um, this is how you would have, you could create that chapter heading, that drop cap, um, add in your page numbers, very, very basic elements that as long as you rinse and repeat, um, have your content placed in here, you can, you can do everything. You can do all of your formatting that you have to. Um, hey, well, well, I have two questions for you if you have a moment. Yes, absolutely. I was going to open, basically open it up to that. <laughs> We're getting down to the wire. Um, um, okay, two questions for you. Can you or should you change the layout of your pages? And is the master page for the title page? Okay, so a um, couple things there. I'm going to start with the master page title page uh, question. So your master page, you can have as many as you need. And I, I would create a separate one for your master your title page uh, personally, um, just because anything you create on your master page as you're scrolling through the rest of your document, if you scroll to the top and you see your title page, you can't mess with that. Now, what I want to ask for context of your title page, are you talking about the, um, the actual first page in your book with the title and author information that usually is adjacent to um, copyright information, or are you talking about your book cover? I ask because the book cover itself, I will always recommend that you create a separate InDesign file to format your book cover, um, usually because you need to have a lead created and you need to also have print instructions and normally with graphics on that, you have it spanning your entire spread. Um, but just remember, you can have as many master pages as needed. And if you just need it for the one page, you can always delete that extra page in your master page uh, spread. It looks like they were referring to both uh, the book cover, cover and the inside page as well. Okay, cool. I hope I, I answered that. Um, well enough for you. Now, can you repeat the first question for me again? Um, can you or should you change the layout of your pages? Are you, now, to ask a clarifying question, are you, for the layout and format of your pages, are you talking about um, your original Word document for formatting? Or are you talking about um, formatting in InDesign? They said, yes, the body of the work. Okay. Um, I'm okay. So I would say it's useful to go ahead and format your body of work as a reference point, but don't get too crazy. 
Um, don't worry about what font you're typing in unless you're sending it to a publisher. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too concerned about it because whenever you place, which is again, control D or file, file place in InDesign, and that's how you import text and graphics, um, everything that's external. Um, it's not going to retain the original formatting that you do, or if it does, it may not be linked. Um, it's far better for you to create your character and paragraph styles in InDesign and apply those to the body of the work. So I wouldn't worry about trying to do a drop cap and a Word document, for instance, because it's not going to carry over and it's not going to translate correctly. Does that answer your question? I think so far it does. Um, they did have a follow-up question. Yes, yes it does. Um, awesome. Let's see, uh, is it possible to do landscape mode uh, for something such as a children's book within InDesign? Absolutely. Um, and just to show you what that would look like, so we're going to go to new document. That orientation option is right here. So you have everything's going to auto to portrait, auto select, but you can select landscape right there. Switch that our units of measurement. So yeah, if you wanted to do, for instance, something like a 10, well, ideally like, or something crazy like a 14 by eight children's book, you totally could. And I believe preview is selected. So see that that is what that would look like. Yeah, the world is your oyster in InDesign. If you have a yin to do something, there's a way to get it done. So that's a great question. Thank you. Is there anything else I can answer about some of the basics of, of getting started with your book formatting that I, I wasn't able to cover so far? So far, I don't see anything in chat. Okay. Well, I really appreciate the questions, guys. That's really awesome. I know we're a little over on time um, and I touched on it a little bit, but I do wanna iterate that um, this book file option in InDesign, um, it's really useful when you have large file sizes and sharing individual chapters or sections for review. It's really great for synchronizing uh, your page numbers and styles and packaging a book for print but it's it is in my opinion difficult to keep the book file up to date and sometimes if your files get unlinked it's going to result in a lot of error messages and it will not display two page spreads beginning on right hand sides uh, and ending in a left hand side which can be very confusing if you're working um, with a printer with specific needs um, and any kind of adjustment you do in it by having text anchors, hyperlinks, et cetera, will break the link. So in my opinion, until they fix some of those things, I highly recommend just working in one file for your book, unless for some reason you're working on a 500 page plus book. Um, so hopefully, um, you guys learned something today. Hopefully I was able to help you guys get started with your book. Um, formatting creations. I hope it goes well. And if you have any questions or feel like you would like some more one-on-one -on -one assistance, we do offer book a librarian sessions um, that you can book online at our website, planolibrary.org. And we also offer access to the Adobe uh, Creative Cloud software at our PAR and Haggard libraries. So it's free with your library card. Please take advantage of that and please uh, fill out our survey that should pop up after this class. Thank you guys again so much for attending. This is your final um, final call out for questions. And again, just thank you so much for attending. Any last minute questions? So far, no, we're good. Okay, awesome. Then I'm going to call it. Thank you guys so much for attending today's class. Have a great day.